Now that the longest session in state history is over, what happened in Olympia and how will it affect our public education system? I'm Representative Tana Sen of the 41st Legislative District, and I'm going to talk about the biggest issue we face this session, fully funding our public schools. In 2012, the Washington State Supreme Court upheld what is now known as the McCleary decision and found that the state was not meeting its constitutional duty to fully fund education. Our Constitution sets out that it is the paramount duty of the state to provide a basic education to all students, a constitutional provision unique to Washington State. While education funding system reforms have been in the works for nearly a decade, this session the legislature was faced with a deadline to fulfill the McCleary promise and find a solution to fully fund K-12 education. So the good news is there's $7.3 billion in new funding for public schools. That new money includes better pay for teachers and paraeducators, class size reductions, and investments in special education, highly capable, and bilingual instruction. Part of the Supreme Court's ruling on education was that there was too much reliance on local levies to pay for basic education including teacher salaries. In the 2014-15 school year, more than 60% of local levy money was being used to fund salaries. That translates to more than $14,000 per teacher and more than $54,000 per administrator. That's changed now. State property taxes are replacing local levies to fund basic education in schools across the state. From now on, local school levies are only supposed to fund things outside the definition of basic education, such as seventh period, extended day and early learning, student enrichment, band, sports, and extracurricular activities. State property taxes will increase and local levies will be capped. It's complicated, so there may be issues with how such a huge change gets implemented. Along with the school district, I'm watching it closely in case we need to pass additional legislation to adjust things. And I'm working with other lawmakers on possibly finding a different, better funding source for our public schools instead of relying so much on property taxes. What's left undone is the state construction budget. For the first time in state history, we don't have one. The construction budget and education funding are linked. You can't hire new teachers via the operating budget without building new classrooms through the construction budget to put them in. The construction budget would invest a total of $4.2 billion in projects in every corner of the state. That includes a record $1 billion to build new public schools, which is needed to help satisfy the Supreme Court McClary decision to fully fund our schools. This is just a short explanation of what happened in the legislature this year in education. And while there has been speculation in the media as to whether the new education funding plan will fulfill our obligation, regardless, it is a great step forward for our education system and our children. If you have questions, comments, or ideas, I would love to hear from you. To all the families, children, teachers, and educators in the Bellevue, Issaquah, Lake Washington, Mercer Island, and Renton School Districts, the additional funding will help our school districts and those across the state. I recognize that we in the 41st are particularly blessed with passionate educators and strong community and parent engagement that takes our children farther than could be imagined. Thank you for that and for the honor of serving as your state representative.